Hey guys and welcome back to my channel for day 5 of Mystery Week. This is the last day so if you think you've missed any of my other videos this week then they'll all be linked down below for you. And if you like what I'm doing on this channel and would like to support me, I do sell little cute enamel pins that I designed. They'll be in the first line in the description box down below. So if you want to go buy those, all proceeds I make from those go straight back into my channel. I need new lighting, a new camera, a new microphone, all that jazz. But let's get into the mystery. Today we're covering a classic whodunit mystery. This is the 2001 murder of Eric Tamayasu. This is the kind of mystery that you could pull out of the pages of an Agatha Christie novel. We have four different suspects who we're going to dissect today. So Eric Tamayasu was 41 years old and he lived in a small city in Oregon called Hood River. It was named obviously after the river that it laid on and nowadays it has a population of about seven and a half thousand people. Back in 2000, 2001, this was probably nearer 6,000. It was a small, fairly quiet city with small amounts of serious crime. In fact, before Eric, the last murder was six years beforehand in 1995. Eric lived in his home just on the outskirts of the city. He owned a lot of land, so his house was kind of in the middle of nowhere, I guess you can say. He ran his own fruit orchard business, so his house was on his business land. The night that he died was likely June 30th, 2001, and that night he'd actually had his first date with a woman called Diana Anderson. The two had known each other for years and years, they'd always been very good friends but recently their friendship had begun to turn into more of a romance and this night was their first official date. Around Eric's house I think he made a dinner and throughout the night they begin to hear some very strange noises. As they're sat in the house they can hear knocking on the side of the wall as if somebody outside is hitting against it with something. A little while later the doorbell rings twice and then they hear somebody scurrying away. Together they go outside to investigate and they don't see anybody but they do find an unknown footprint. However this footprint later washed away so any investigators never actually saw it. For this we just have Diana's words. Later that night Eric and Diana say goodbye to each other and Eric heads to bed. This is the last time that anyone ever saw him alive, apart from his murderer. A few days later, people begin to get a little bit concerned that they haven't heard anything from Eric in a few days. And so his good friend, Don Dixon, heads round. Don knocks on the front door and doesn't get any answer, but Don has a spare key for Eric's house for the back door. So he goes round to the back of the house and lets himself in. And as soon as he goes into the house, he smells this horrific smell. Calling for Eric, he has a look round, can't find him anywhere until he walks into the bedroom. In the bedroom, he finds Eric's decomposing body lying on the bed. He immediately calls the Hood River County Sheriff's Department and lots of officers immediately head round. One of them was the Sheriff, Joe Wampler. Don also called Eric's sister, Ramona Tamiyasu, to let her know what's happened. And she said that he is absolutely hysterical on the phone. And he says something a little bit strange. He says the words, he can't see any exit wounds, which is strange because nobody knew how Eric had died at this point. In fact, as soon as the sheriff, Joe Wampler, arrives, he assumes that Eric has died from natural causes, probably a heart attack. There are no signs of foul play, there's no bullet shells or anything lying around, but the body is so decomposed that you can't really tell what's happened to it. In fact, it wasn't until the autopsy the next day that they discovered that Eric had been murdered with three bullets found in his head. These were 22 caliber bullets. The decomposition was just too bad beforehand to actually see any wounds. They estimated that he died four to five days beforehand, but most likely not soon after Diana had left him, probably that night. So what was Don doing talking about exit wounds when we didn't even know that he'd been shot until the day after? He had an explanation for this. He said that he assumed that Eric had committed suicide, although he never really gave much of a reason as to why he thought this. And there was no gun found in Eric's hand or anywhere nearby. But Don wasn't the only one with strange actions. Sheriff Joe Wampler, also did something very, very odd. He walks onto the scene, sees that Eric is dead in his bed and assumes that there was no foul play whatsoever. And so apparently to spare his family the heartache of seeing this disgusting bed covered in decomposition fluids, Joe makes the decision to take the bed or the bedding and the bed frame outside and burn it. A key piece of evidence. I mean, that's either incredibly suspicious or just horrifically poor police work. Either way, he shouldn't have done it. Joe actually gets Don to help him drag the mattress outside because this wasn't an easy feat. Like they had to drag the mattress down the stairs outside. They put it into Eric's own fire pit and just burnt it. 
He has later admitted that in hindsight he probably wouldn't do it again, but he said that he's just trying to be the nice guy. He just wanted to spare the Tamiyasu family the grief of seeing this awful bed and having to deal with it him themselves. And so he decides to deal with it for them. Is he lying? I don't really know. The most baffling thing about Eric's death, according to friends and family, is that he had no enemies. He was a genuinely nice guy who got on with absolutely everyone. He lived his life in quite a quiet manner. He kept to himself. So who the hell would want to murder him? Nobody has ever been able to come up with a solid motive or answer to that question. The house wasn't robbed. Everything was exactly where it should have been. There was no sign of any kind of disturbance. I didn't see anything that said there was an actual break-in at the house, so I'm assuming there wasn't any like broken windows or knocked down doors, or anything like that. This makes people think that Eric most likely knew whoever had done this because he'd either let them into the house himself or they had a key. Now this entire case really frustrated law enforcement and still does to this day because like I said, Hood River was a really quiet place to live generally. Of course there was crime, there's crime everywhere, but it wasn't the kind of place where people were just murdered. It was such a small place that everyone kind of knew everybody, but suddenly one of these people that everyone knew was a killer. They were scared that this person would strike again because as far as they could tell there was no motive for Eric's murder, so what was to say that they wouldn't kill somebody else with no motive? But of course, they never did it again. So whoever did this was purely just after Eric. And so we're gonna talk about our four suspects. Two of them we've already touched on, Don Dixon and Joe Wampler. Two of them we haven't, Eric Smith and Diana's ex-boyfriend. Let's start with the latter, as we don't really know much information about him at all. In fact, his name's never even been released and we've got very limited information. But basically, Diana had a child with an ex-boyfriend and apparently this ex-boyfriend had a history of stalking sort of behaviour. He was quite violent. And honestly, it kind of makes sense. Diana was on her first date with Eric that night. What if this guy was so jealous and was watching them from outside the house, which would explain why they thought somebody was outside the house. And then this person waits until Diana leaves and then goes and rings the doorbell. Eric, thinking it's Diana, goes and opens the door and this person just confronts him and shoots him in the head three times. However, there was no evidence to suggest that Eric was shot dead by the front door. Eric was found in his bed. And as far as I can tell, there was nothing to show that he was killed elsewhere and then placed in his bed. But then again, Eric was found four to five days after he died. So this gives somebody plenty of time to clean up after themselves and maybe drag Eric's body to the bed. From what I've read though, it does seem that it's more likely that Eric was in the bed when he died. But to be honest, with the state of decomposition that he was in, we can't really tell. Especially as they destroyed a key piece of evidence, the mattress. Like I mentioned earlier, as far as I'm aware, there was no sign of any kind of break-in, no windows were broken, no doors were smashed down. And I don't really see any reference to any forensic testing, DNA testing, things like that in the house. So either they didn't do any testing or they did do it and just didn't find anything significant. If it's the latter, then somebody either cleaned up very, very thoroughly after themselves, which would make sense seeing as they had four to five days to do so, or if they did find somebody else's DNA, then they didn't think anything of it because it was somebody who would most likely already be spending time in the house, somebody Eric knew. In terms of the other suspects, it kind of becomes a he said, she said situation, or I should probably say a he says, he said situation. Everyone's pointing the fingers at other people to try and get the heat off themselves. And this kind of just incriminates people more. This is particularly Don Dixon. He is pointing the fingers at everyone pretty much that Eric ever came into contact with. And one of these people was Eric's close friend, another man called Eric Smith, who I'm going to refer to as Eric Smith every time, just so you don't get confused. So Eric Smith was Eric's really close friend and business partner. They were so close that Eric was Eric Smith's best man at his wedding. The two had a side business together, selling used cars, which had actually recently gone out of business. It was, it just didn't work out for them. Don Dixon says that one day he's walking past Eric's office and Eric Smith is in there and he hears the two having a blazing row with each other. They're screaming at each other and Eric is saying to Eric Smith that he owes him 50 to $60,000. He's accusing Eric Smith of pocketing money and Don says that later he goes up to Eric as he's leaving and says to Eric like, are you all right? But Eric just says that son of a bitch gets in his car and then drives away and Don says that's the last time he ever saw Eric. 
Eric Smith, however, says this is complete nonsense. He said they never had an argument that day, nobody owes each other any money, and Don's just completely lying. And this is backed up by the police investigation. They obviously looked into all of their business dealings together, and they couldn't find any instance of either of them owing the other any money, especially fifty to sixty thousand dollars. They each only put fifteen thousand dollars in there to begin with, so maybe Don was mistaken and heard Eric saying 15,000 instead of 50,000, which is possible, but they still didn't even know each other 15,000. So Eric Smith is completely denying this. Don said it happened, but to be honest, other than this, Eric Smith has no motive to kill Eric. They were really good friends. Like I said, Eric was his best man at his wedding and Honestly, that's it. We don't have any other evidence here. Just Don pointing the finger and saying, yep, they had this argument, so clearly Eric Smith is guilty. And Don Dixon, once again, points the finger this time at Joe Wampler. Now, obviously, we already know that Joe has burnt the mattress, so he is already implicated in this. He has already made himself look very, very suspicious. However, Don goes around saying that Eric had previously mentioned that he was in a relationship with an older Polynesian woman. Now, Joe's wife was an older Polynesian woman and Hood River was a small town. Like I said, at the time, it only had about 6,000 people living there. And I read up on Wikipedia, so it might not be 100% accurate, but only 1.5% of the population is Asian. 0.5% is other ethnicities that isn't listed in the list. So this would include Polynesian. So I would highly, highly doubt that there are many older Polynesian women living in Hood River. So by Don saying that Eric was having an affair with one, it kind of just points a finger at Joe's wife. And this would give Joe a motive. The implication was that Joe could have murdered Eric in a fit of jealous rage. And then obviously burn the bed to hide any evidence. But my only question is, why would Joe wait until people are around to burn this evidence? This is the one thing that makes me think that he was just a bumbling cop who wanted to be the nice guy and was doing it to help the family rather than hiding evidence. Because if Joe wanted to destroy any evidence, he had four to five days to do so when Eric was just lying in his house, dead, nobody was coming to check on him. Why would he not do it then rather than days later when everyone's around and everyone knows what he'd done? And Joe completely denied that his wife was ever having an affair. He said that it caused her so much embarrassment and so much hurt that she was actually embarrassed to go out on the street and face people, even though it wasn't true. I'd be quite interested to know whether these rumours about the affair only started after Eric's death, in which case it was obviously Don who started these rumours, or if these rumours were going around before his death as well. But even then, you've got to be a very certain type of man to find out your wife's having an affair and immediately go to murder him. And if I'm being completely honest with you, Joe doesn't strike me as that kind of man. I could be mistaken though, of course. And then, of course, we have Don Dixon, the man who started the majority of rumours about other people, which, to be honest, I think makes him look even more guilty. He's getting the heat off himself. He's trying to point the finger at everyone else, saying, no, he did it, he did it. It definitely wasn't me. The general consensus that Don was just a little bit strange, and his friendship with Eric was kind of made up, according to a lot of Eric's other friends. According to a lot of Eric's other friends, they'd never even heard of Don, which is weird because Don said they spent so much time together, he even had a spare key for his house. The people who had heard of Don said that Eric viewed him as more of a casual business acquaintance and not a best friend. But Don would say that the two of them would have lunch together pretty much every single day. I read a post by someone online, and this is quite interesting, um, it's from somebody who claims to know Eric. And obviously I can't 100% confirm this is true, it might just be somebody making it up, but I thought it was quite interesting to share. Um, this person said they knew Eric, they had no idea who Don was, but apparently the only reason that Don had a spare key for Eric's house was because Don was actually doing some landscaping work for him around that same time, and Eric had given him a key just so he could get in and out of the house. So from what I read, I think that Don thought the friendship with him and Eric was a lot more serious than Eric did. Eric thought they were just like business acquaintances, Don thought that Eric was his best friend in the entire world. Perhaps this was a pattern in Don's life. Don always thought that people were closer to him than they were. He struggled to make friendships. And maybe Eric was just the last straw when Don realized that Eric really wasn't as close with him as he thought he was. Maybe Eric actually told him like, you're a bit too much, leave me alone. Maybe then he plotted to kill him. Don claims that when he first discovered Eric's body, he takes a quiet moment to pray before calling the sheriff's department where he calmly tells them what happened. 
However, by the time he calls Ramona, Eric's sister, he is hysterical on the phone. And this is where he makes the comment as well about there being no exit wounds. Why would he say that? He said that he thought that Eric had just committed suicide, but that's a very strange conclusion to jump to. I mean, to be honest, if I discovered somebody dead in their bed one day, I'd probably think the same thing that Joe did. I'd assume that they died of natural causes. I wouldn't immediately assume that they've committed suicide with a gun, even though there's no gun anywhere near the body. He said in an interview later on that the only two people he knows for sure that didn't kill Eric are him and his wife everyone else is a suspect. But to be honest, if he hadn't thrown so many aspersions at everyone else, I probably wouldn't think he's half as guilty as he looks. Just the fact that he was trying to get the heat off himself, I think makes him look 10 times more guilty. But of course, there's no actual evidence to suggest that Don or anyone else killed Eric. There is zero evidence for anything, so you've got to bear that in mind. Ramona actually registered a complaint with the Sheriff's Department about the destruction of her brother's bed. It was destruction of public property. And the sheriff's office actually willingly paid for a new bed. They gave her the money. They're like, we're so sorry. Here's the money, get a new bed. Which obviously doesn't bring back the destroyed evidence, but it's something. Ramona also requested that all of the suspects in the case do polygraph tests, just to put an end to all the rumors. And Joe said that he's not a viable suspect, but he's willing to do one anyway to aid the investigation. And I actually read a couple of conflicting reports on this. One report said that Joe did do it and it came back as completely negative. He was telling the truth the entire way through. The other report said that the police department refused to let him because it wasn't professional or something like that. So I really, I'm not sure about that, but I, I am inclined to think that he did do it. Eric Smith also did the test and passed with flying colors. The only person who was a bit awkward about it was Don Dixon. Now he didn't do the polygraph test with the police department. He did an independent one with like an external company and it came back as inconclusive. And they said it came back as this because Don was actually on medication for a kidney transplant that he'd had earlier in the year or the year before and it was sort of skewing the results. So what we have here is one person who passed with flying colours, one person who may or may not have passed, may or may not have done it and the third person who got inconclusive results. So it really doesn't tell you much. And that is everything that we have in the case of Eric Tamiyasu. It's a classic whodunit situation with no evidence to prosecute anyone. The Sheriff's Office said that they consulted with top homicide investigators from across Oregon and everyone said apparently that they did exactly what they should have done in that situation, probably bar burning the key piece of evidence. Um, however, many people do disagree with this. I also just want to throw in something quick at the end about another possible suspect, which I don't really see mentioned in many places, but Diane. Diane was the last person to see Eric alive. She was around his house that night, and everything that we have about the creepy things going on outside Eric's house all come from her. I mean, is it impossible to think that Eric could have gone to bed with Diana and then she shoots him in the head three times? For some reason, the police never properly looked at her as a suspect, or maybe they did. Maybe she had an ironclad alibi which showed that she absolutely didn't do it. But there is very little information about it online. I mean, the police seemed to trust her, but if it was me, she'd be the first person that I would look at because she was the last person to see him that night. Maybe she was the luckiest person ever who literally got away with murder, or maybe she is telling the truth and had nothing to do with it whatsoever. We'll never really know. As you can probably guess in this video, I strongly lean towards Don Dixon being the number one suspect here, just because I don't believe Joe or Eric Smith had major motives to do anything. The rumor about Eric having an affair with Joe's wife was started by Don, it seems. But I also think it's highly, highly likely that this could have been the work of Diana's ex-boyfriend, a jealous, violent man, apparently. I wish we knew more information about him because I think he is definitely a very good suspect here. So let me know down below who you think killed Eric Tamiyasu and I'll be back for another midweek mystery video next Wednesday. Bye guys!